is Joanne, and thank you for joining us today here again on Flourish. Today we're talking about how do we raise our children in a godly way in an evil and dark world. Have you ever asked yourself that question? Well, you know, we love our children, but when we get them, when they're born, they are not, they do not come with an instruction manual. And so sometimes it's really hard to know how to raise them in a right way. How do we discipline our children and yet still maintain a loving, growing relationship with them? How do we make sure they're on the right path and that we've got them on the right path? Well, these are some of the questions that we'll talk about today. And I have three of my most favorite people with me. I have Sharon and Kathleen and Gina. You wanna say hi, girls? Hello. How are you? Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about yourselves and how many kids you have, things like that? Well, I'm Gina and I have two Two boys, they're grown men at this point. They're 37 and 40. And from one, I have two, two grandsons. Aww. And I'm Kathleen, and I have three kids that are all in their 30s, two sons and a daughter, and four darling grandchildren, five and under. And I'm Sharon, and I have two children. Uh, my daughter's 26, my son is 22, and I have one two-month-old grandbaby. Yay. <laughs> what a little bundle of joy we all have between us. Well, yeah. I have six children and they're all adults and I have 13 grandchildren and one more on the way. So between all of us, we could open our own school. <laughs> and I know a lot of you probably have big families as well. You love and adore your children and your grandchildren. And that's what we want to talk about today is, is raising our kids. Because let's face it, moms and dads, it's not an easy job. It is something that has stretched me more than anything else. I don't know about y'all. Would you yes. Would you say yes? 100%. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, I want to tell you a story. There was a gentleman on an airplane, and he had three little kids with him. The oldest was maybe about five years old, and he had a two-year-old and one that was just like, you know, one and a half toddling around the airplane. And so on this flight, um, the father's just kind of zoned out, and those three kids are going wild, mm -hmm. jumping up and down on the seats, playing with their seatbelts, running down the aisles. And you could hear the other passengers on the plane getting a little uptight, murmuring amongst themselves. They're frustrated with how wild these kids are and how un control the father is. Well, finally, one of the ladies on the airplane kind of gets up and goes up to the, the dad and says, excuse me, sir, I think you really need to get control of your kids. And when she said that, the dad hardly even, you know, it was like he was again in another world. And he said, I am so sorry. He said, we are coming home for my wife's funeral and I just haven't been paying attention. Well, the people around heard him say that as well, and that just melted everyone's heart on the airplane. And the whole, gosh, the whole atmosphere changed. All of a sudden, people were holding those three kids on their laps, giving them snacks, reading them stories, coloring, doing whatever they could to entertain those kids. And that changed everything. And you know, sometimes I think it's so easy to judge people's parenting skills. Unless we know the whole story. Right. And so I don't know if you've ever found yourself either the one being judged or the one doing the judging. But we need to be really cautious because we know parenting is not easy. Well, let's start off with a verse from the Bible. Since this is a show where we love Jesus, we always want to refer to his word. Let's start off with a great Bible verse. Proverbs 13, 24 says, Whoever spares the rod hates his children. But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. You know, if we don't correct our children when they're doing something wrong, they're not going to learn right from wrong. It's our role as a parent to teach and train our children. But we want to do it in love. So Sharon, let's start with you. How have you and Bryce learned to discipline your kids in love? Well, I'll tell you, it, uh, we really wanted to honor God in raising our children and obey Him. And it wasn't easy for me because I wanted my children to love me and be happy with me at all times, and that's impossible, especially when <laughs> right? you're disciplining them. But we really wanted them to know what God's standards were, and so we were committed to disciplining them. And sometimes that means I would have to go in my room and cry where they wouldn't see mm -hmm. me when I had to take care of things. So. That was hard, but I'm so yeah. glad we did. 
Mm. Mm. Yeah. Another verse in the Bible that I love, it says Proverbs 22, 6. Proverbs is full of so much wisdom. If you're looking for wisdom, Proverbs is a great book of the Bible to go to. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he or she should go. And even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that verse can has depth and meaning to it. But you know, there is another translation in Hebrew that you, this verse can be translated in that I think instills hope. And it goes this way, train a child in the way that he or she sh should go. And even when he or she are old, it will not depart from them. Mm -hmm. Meaning God's word will come back and, um, and, and play out in their life. So Kathleen, Let's ask you now, how does the second part of that verse give you hope as a parent? Well, I mean, our hope lies in Jesus. I mean, he is the, the one who is faithful when we are faithless. Um, and then my hope is in the fact we have two or three kids, as I said, um, and two of them are walking with the Lord and one of them is not. He's a wonderful young man, but he is not walking with the Lord. And what this verse does is give me the hope that God's word, which has been planted in his heart growing up, mm -hmm. that God's spirit is still there and pressed on his heart and that God is re relentlessly pursuing mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. at all times. God's love, his pursuing love is chasing after him. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Will not yes. return void. Mm. Well, I want to tell you the story of this woman. Her name was Shirley and she was an incredible swimmer. In fact, she was such a good swimmer. She ended up going to the Olympics and, and winning a lot of gold medals. And I used to swim against her back in the day when I was a young girl. And um, she was so much better than all the other swimmers in her category. She was just swim way faster than anyone else. And so when she would go to swim meets, um, it, you know, to beat someone was not a big deal in a race because she beat everyone in the race. So she had to, each time she went to a swim meet, she had to beat her own personal record. And if she didn't beat her own personal record, her parents would make her walk home from that swim meet. So the reason I tell that story is we have to be so careful that when we discipline, we do it in a balanced way. We want to love them, but we also need to parent our kids. We can't be so much of a parent or so much of a, what's the way of wording this? We want to be friends with our kids, but we also have to parent them. You can't be all friendship and not parent. There's got to be a balance, but you can't be so much parenting and harsh that it, it borderlines on abuse. And to tell you what happened to Shirley as an adult, again, she swam in the Olympics, she got many gold medals, but afterwards as an adult, we saw her in, in an interview and she said, you know, I'm married now, I have children, I hate swimming. I never even taught my children to swim. So her, you know, her child rearing went so far on the other side that it, she had a harshness that she still can't overlook still followed her into her adult years. So yes, it's our job to parent, but we need balance. So there's two complementary things that we're gonna talk about right now. First of all, when we parent our children, we need to take into account their individual tendencies, you know, their personality traits, their gifts, their abilities, their strengths, their weaknesses, their age. You know, are we disciplining them appropriately for their age, their physical, and their mental capacities, because all of that gives us discernment in how we should rear our children. So taking that into mind, or consideration, Gina, you have two boys that are both adults. So how did you do that? How did you encourage your boys with their different personalities? Okay, well, that, let's see. When the boys were in school, back to we're training them up to love the Lord. Well, that also means that I've got to be listening to the Lord if I'm going to be training them, mm, right? Right. So I'm watching them as they grow. And Justin, went, my oldest, went through a phase where he was really having trouble in school, like so much so that it, his grades were consistently mm, being bad. Mm -hmm. Well, that was one thing. Then all of a sudden he was coming back and I could tell it was really affecting his self-esteem, mm. his self-worth. And so then I'm just really praying, Lord, what do what do I do about this? We've tried everything that we know to do. But then I figured out he was not the kind of a student that could sit in a big classroom that could have someone speak to him mm -hmm. and learn that way. So we actually pulled him out of the school and put him into a small neighborhood um, Christian school. 
and he was taught to learn by um, learning in a cubicle, and he self-taught. Hmm. And I'm telling you, he went from low grades in one semester to A's and B's because he was a student that responded to that. Wow. And I give God the credit for that because I wouldn't have, I, I don't think I would have known that. Mm -hmm. But one thing that kind of delights me is to this day, I mean, he's always learning, he's always doing something. And I'll say, how did you know how to do that? But it's because he's a self learner. Wow. So praise God, he showed us to do that. And then my younger son, Hunter, now he was good at school, but um, I figured out around the same time he was being bullied in school. Mm. And we, we tried to come alongside him and help him. And of course, he was a little envious that Justin's going to this new school and getting out a little early because one of his credits could be music. Well, Hunter was huge in music. I mean, that was his passion, still is to this day. So we actually pulled him from the school and put him in the same school where they had, uh, he, he was like the little ballad of Victorian because he didn't have trouble with school, right? But he did, and he did really well. But um, that gave them the opportunity. They had a little, a band and it was called 33 AD. It was a Christian band. And they used that time, that the extra time they had in the afternoons to go around and uh, lead worship all mm, around the state of Texas and around little neighborhoods around there, mm. uh, states around there. Gina, I love that. Both of those, you were very discerning to understand yes, the needs God. of your boys. Yeah, yeah, God gave you that discernment to know that you needed to do something different yeah. and according to their different personality yeah. types. That's awesome. Well, the second part of that verse, <clears throat> excuse me, says train up a child, of course, in the way he should go. And that word train up, if we look at it in Hebrew, means to dedicate your child or consecrate them to the service of God dedicating your child to Jesus. So I have a question for all three of you and including myself. So for all four of us, when your children were little or at some point, did you dedicate your children to Jesus? Yeah. Did you, yeah. you all did. did? We did too. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to encourage you friends, if you are a follower of Jesus and you have children, whether they're newborn babies, whether that baby's still in your womb, or even if they're adults, take that child in prayer dedicate them to the Lord Jesus Christ, that they and pray that God will, um, God will invade their hearts. God will invade their lives and their whole lives. They will live for Jesus. We want to encourage you to do that, to, to dedicate your child to the Lord. That's a great gift. It really is. But Kathleen, back to you now, another question. So you with your children, yes. how did you teach and train them in the ways of the Lord? Well, as, as Gina, as you said, I mean, unless we are dedicated and consecrated to the Lord ourselves. How can we train anyone else? Jesus made friends, disciples that followed him and he taught his ways. That is what we are doing when we discipline our kids. We are discipling them, disciplining them in mm -hmm. the ways of the Lord. Um, so of course, the word of God is, is the key. In our homes, we wanted God's word, who God is, the things that he teaches us, to saturate our home so that it could permeate our children, that it would be impressed on their hearts, not just the words and the teachings, but that they would love the Lord with mm -hmm. all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mm -hmm. So lots of family devotions um, after dinner, which were fun and you know wonderful. And then sometimes the boys would fight and it's not that fun, but that's okay because kids, um, <laughs> And memorizing the word, tucking it into their hearts, that they, the spirit would always be able to bring that back up to them. Mm -hmm. um, and then so many ways, you know, music, little kids are so fun, singing, dancing, all the ways that you teach them to love the Lord. But the, 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 the discipline part um, was also really important to us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even from the time the kids were tiny, they would have jobs to do around the house. And we, on Saturdays or whatever day it was, would gather around and, you know, teamwork, we're going to do this together and taught them to do chores. Well, that was great. We tried to make it fun, you know, charts and stickers. And a lot of times it was, and at other times it wasn't fun for anyone. But it was so important mm -hmm. to teach them that because if we don't teach our kids to do hard things well, to do, you know, boring things well when you don't want to do it, what are they going to do when they're grown up? That's right. So that was hugely important to us. Mm, Just I a love couple that. Things. 
all that to say, we never did anything all right. I mean, right. you, know, you know how this is. Right. Yeah. You know, one thing yeah. I think about with that, Kathleen, is, you know, none of us are going to be perfect parents because none of us are perfect. Right. And I think of God, our father, and, you know, he is perfect. God is God, right? He created Adam and Eve in the garden, his first children. And yet Adam and Eve rebelled, didn't they? And had the perfect parent. Why is that? Not about God, of course God is perfect, but it's because of free will. God has given us all a choice and all of our children and our grandchildren, all of your children, your grandchildren, they also have a free will and choice. So we need to do the very best that we can do as parents, but it is really up to God and up to them, our children, and how they turn out in many respects. But we never stop praying for them. And going back to that verse of training up a child in the way he is, he should go or the way she should go. And, and when they were old, it will not, you know, it will not, they will come back. And I want to encourage you, if you have a child that has strayed from the Lord, if you've taught them about Jesus, or maybe you're a new follower of Christ and so you didn't have the opportunity to teach your kids about Jesus, prayer number one changes everything. Romans 8, 28 says that God will work all things together for good, all things, even a wandering child. And we've got evidence of that in our family. Of our six kids at one point, all six of them had turned their back on the Lord. But now all of them as adults have come back and they're all serving Jesus. They all love him. So don't give up hope. And then also we need to remember in God's word, he says in Isaiah that his word will not return to him empty. It will always accomplish what God desires. So as all of y'all have taught your kids the ways of Jesus, instilling the Bible and biblical principles in their lives, it will accomplish what God desires. Okay, so talking about that, Sharon, I'm excited about this part. You recently had a breakthrough in your family with one of your children. Tell us about that. We did. So we have a son who is now 22 years old. And when he was growing up, he was cheerful. He was obedient. He was funny. We just had the best time. And then when he hit 14, all of that changed and it seemed almost overnight. He became angry, depressed, suicidal. He told us repeatedly how much he mm. hated us. He turned his back on God. He stopped mm. reading his Bible, stopped going to church. And uh, as he went into college, he um, started making some very sad life choices that really grieved our hearts. And so my husband, my daughter mm -hmm. and I, we just prayed, prayed, prayed. And some days it was so painful just to pray. I think I cried every single day for two years at least. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, then God turned it around. About a year ago, God appeared in a dream to our son. And he told him he was going the wrong way. Um, that he was making a big mistake. And that really shook up our son. And the very next day, he broke up with the girl that he was seeing. Mm -hmm. And he obeyed God when God pointed out the girl that was for him, who was a follower of Jesus. And he started pursuing her. He started telling her his complete story. Um, and she said, you know, I have room in my heart to forgive all of that, which was remarkable. And then uh, just in the last month, what we saw happen around Christmas time, oh my goodness. Uh, so what happened was our son came to us and he asked forgiveness of each member of our family and he did it individually. And he confessed how he had hurt mm -hmm. us and wounded us. And he said how much he loved us and that he loved God and he was gonna pursue God. And of course we forgave him, we hugged him, we were all crying. But um, then one last thing, he told me, you know, mom, even though I stopped pursuing God, mm. God never stopped pursuing me. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. Wow. Mm -hmm. Great story full of hope. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you know, um, getting our kids on that right path is difficult. Um, again, they have free will. They have their choices, right? Um, scripture says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. <laughs> but how do we get them on that right path when they do have free will? Kathleen. Oh, gosh. 
gosh. That's a high standard, <laughs> right? I, you were no going to share. I can answer this. Um, yes, actually, I'm going to tell you a story, if that's okay. Yes. From the little ones, because what, having grandkids just brings back so many memories of raising our own kids. Yes. Um, but we have a three-year-old granddaughter who's darling, of course, Piper, um, and my son-in-law's family, they are not Christ followers. He's actually the first believer in his family. So at the their other grandparents' house, they're at a big meal recently. All the adults have started to eat, and Piper's eating, and she takes her Fork sets it down and says, stop eating to the whole table of grown-ups. And they all stop and they put down their fork. And she said, we have to hold hands. We need to pray <laughs> because that's what we always did. And that's what my daughter and son-in-law do with their kids. Beautiful. And so that whole table of people that don't want grown-ups to tell them about Jesus stopped, held hands, and Piper bowed her head. Dear Jesus, and prayed this sweet three-year-old prayer full of faith. Mm. And you know you're going to receive that from a little child. Mm. Whereas if I went and said, hey, you guys They're put your hands, hands. Yeah, <laughs> they'd be like, go, get out of here. <laughs> so, mm. yes. But that's the, when the training and showing them the right path. Thank you, Jesus. We have the right path. We know what to teach. Um, and then just watching, you know, the generations mm. fulfill that. What Tiny is, story. That is a precious story. Yeah, and that reminds it. me when Jesus says that we t should come to him with faith as a yes. child. Yes. Believing everything that God tells us to do. That is precious. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Sharon, how do, what are some ways that you taught your kids about Jesus? Well, it was, you know, it's really relationship over religion. So mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. is alive. And we talked about that. Jesus is alive. And so we would have conversation around our breakfast table, our dinner table. Um, and we just, he is a part of our family. And I think that they saw that and were drawn to that. And that, you know, he's the God that can appear in a dream. He's a God that can counsel right. you in your dreams. How amazing is that? Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. We just said, he's, he's part of our family. He's alive. He's here. And so we're going to talk about him and honor him and follow Beautiful. him. Mm. Well, our time is getting short, but we have a couple questions I still want to tackle that are so important. So two questions. First of all, um, Gina, to you, you're a single parent. And so I would love for you to encourage our single moms out there and how they can raise their children to love Jesus like you have. Well, first, you just, um, I mean, this I did everything just as I did it. But here's what I do know is you just got to be in relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord and be yes. hearing him because they're not going to buy anything that you're not doing. That's right. So your heart has to be before the Lord. And um, that was real important. What was great for us is we were we were in church a lot. The boys were real involved in the youth group and things. And so they um, had good examples of adults mm -hmm. who loved the Lord as well. And so they're in a good environment with kids, but they had that example from adults. And to this day, I mean, just last week or so, my son had something that came up and he needed to seek wise counsel. He went to some of those people wow. back from that time in his life and asking, this is my prayer need. This is my, will, will you pray for that? So don't underestimate the power of your believing friends and you want your children to see that example mm -hmm. of believing friends. And then I think just the last thing is just really consistency. And my son also talked about that, um, you know, it's just his job to be consistent mm -hmm. so that he can raise them to love and to respect their mother, mm -hmm. to love and respect others. And his job is just to continue to so be good. faithful to that call as a parent. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a good advice to be faithful to your call so as good. a parent. And one example I think that's so funny is if someone, he said, if a child is yelling at the mother, the mother yells back, stop yelling. What is that teaching? Yeah, like, yeah. So you're, it's yeah. your spirit. It's yeah. your spirit that's gotta be God's spirit and Amen. not your flesh. So good. Okay, one last question. Great answer on all that, Gina. Kathleen. How do we not discipline in anger? We discipline in anger and hey, that loses all our validity. So how, would, how did you and Pat handle that? Well, it's just like what Gina, what you just said. There's a verse in Proverbs 15 that says a soft, whoops, let me look. Um, a gentle answer. Yes. 
A soft, yes, thank you. <laughs> Let's just say it together. A soft answer will turn away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Mm -hmm. So like you said with that mom or the little boy yelling and then yelling at them, mm -hmm. Joanne, we had to learn how to take a breath. I mean, we disciplined in anger and learned to be quick askers of forgiveness from our children. But you take a breath, you pray, mm -hmm. Jesus, help me, you shut your mouth. Um, and then you wait and you either sit with your child who's throwing a fit or just interact in a way that brings them out of the disobedience to where you are, which is calm and peaceful, mm -hmm, instead mm -hmm. of going into that place of, you know, chaos where, where right, they are, right. which is so easy to go to. Powering down. Power down. Instead yes. of powering up. Yes. And that's what does it. Well, we only have a few yes. minutes left, but I want to close our time together. Thank you, ladies. And I'm telling you, friends, these are three godly mothers. None of us are perfect, of course, but they have precious children because these moms have poured so much love into their families. And so we want to encourage you to do the same thing. And I'm going to close. I want you to close your eyes and pray this prayer with me. Three beautiful Bible verses that I want to pray for you as you parent your children. So Lord, we thank you according to Psalm 127 that children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from you. So we thank you, Father, for all of our children, the children that we have here on set and the children represented in the audience. Each one is a soul made for eternity. We pray that each one will one day go to heaven because they'll put their faith in Jesus as Savior. And then Lord, we pray 3 John 1, 4, a beautiful verse that says, as parents, we have no greater joy than knowing that our children are walking in the truth. So Father, I pray for all of our children that they would find the truth. Jesus, you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we pray that all of our children will find Jesus as Savior and follow the truth that he gives. And this last verse, Lord, we pray from Lamentations 2 that says, let us pour out our hearts like water to the Lord. Let us lift up our hands to him in prayer for the lives of our children. Father, we lift up our children to you, each one, no matter where they are in life, no matter how old they are, we lift them up to you. Jesus, meet them where they are and draw them to your heart. And may they follow you into eternity. That is what we pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the gift of children. Thank you for allowing us to be parents because we understand your love for us all the more when we love our very own children. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, thank for being with us. And thank you, friends, for being with us today. May the Lord uh, make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance. And I'm saying this verse wrong, so let me read it correctly. May the Lord bless you and keep you from number six. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I pray blessings on you in Jesus' name. Until next time.